How's it and welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So in this video we're going to be going through the daily missions that you can do to get Zenny, EXP, potential orbs and just a whole bunch of experience for your profile. Um, we'll also take a look at training items as well. So these missions you can find under the growth tab uh, under the events screen uh, they're up every single day so I do suggest that you do them every single day they cost a total of 35 stamina so they're pretty doable even for new players um, the first event we're going to look at is the hidden potential event so each day a different type of hidden potential event will be up for you to do it goes from agility to tech to int to sa to strength so it's a very good event to do to get some orbs um, and we'll go into it now i'm just using my uh, margin boo saga team you can use any team these characters are not really strong i would suggest anything under a hundred percent lead will be sufficient um, and then we just want to scout out for the route uh, we want to see which uh, route we can take to get the most of these blue tiles because that will give us a whole bunch of randomized orbs the first opponent always drops small orbs, the second opponent always drops medium orbs, and the third opponent always drops large orbs. So I generally choose to rotate between them each week. Um, most people will say that you should only do medium or only do large. So you definitely want to make sure that you are doing whatever you think you need to fill up your potential orb system. So the fights aren't sufficiently strong, um, there's nothing really too much to worry about. Uh, you usually fight between one to three enemies depending on which one you take. Um, so there's nothing too strategic or anything that you have to do. The main thing is just to plot out your route and make sure that you select the right tabs. The amount of orbs you can get will generally be randomized but it, you roughly get about 250 small orbs. Uh, anywhere between 70 to 120 medium orbs and then somewhere between 10 to 30 large orbs obviously depending on which of the enemies you choose to face so it's definitely worth it to do um, I would suggest if you do it every single day you will eventually accrue quite a significant amount of orbs that will help you unlock the hidden potential of your units you don't want to skip this event, I know it can sometimes seem tedious and that the orb amounts aren't a lot, but they add up very quickly, especially if you do it over a month, that's like a thousand small orbs, it's like 800 and something uh, medium orbs, so I definitely suggest doing it all the time. The next event we're going to do is the training event. So this is the Turtle School training event. It actually has a buff for a category. If you use the Peppy Gals category, you will receive a bonus on the items that you get. This stage is very similar to the other ones um, in that you can find a kind of buffed up version of the boss. Uh, he's not necessarily hard, but you can find up a buff version of the boss if you see the buff Roshi you know that you're going to get at least uh, multiple of each type of training item here you want to make sure you choose the route that has the most golden uh, red capsules the reason you want the golden ones is because that means that they are guaranteed turtle shell drops in this stage so i would definitely suggest aiming to accrue as many of those as possible the fight against Roshi is incredibly easy. Um, you can literally run uh, like a 30% lead and beat him in one hit. He's not designed to be hard. But um, the main thing you're going to want to do here obviously is hopefully get buff Roshi and then obviously have as big of a team bonus as you can. The nice thing about this fight is that you also get a mission bonus every single day and you get a whole bunch of training items when you hand in that mission so you actually get three z swords of each type which is very nice and helps to fill out and flesh out those missing training items that you won't have if you don't run this stage again it's another thing where you go oh, you know three z swords do i really need this you do you're going to you run this every single day and eventually you're going to have enough training items that you don't need to worry about it especially when you're awakening multiple units at once or you're working on essay fodder for other units 
it's very nice to have an excess amount of training items so that you can keep up with the demand that you need to train a very well uh, trained strong and variable box the next one we're going to do is the world tournament event uh, this one has a similar bonus, except instead of Peppy Girls, it is World Tournament. Uh, there's a lot of free World Tournament cards that you can use. The World Tournaments are once every month and a half or two months or so. So there's plenty of World Tournament cards that you can use that are free to play that will give you a nice decent bonus for this event. And yeah, the only other thing you need to look out for is if you see Vidal with um, Hercule. That means that you're going to be able to get an extra amount of items. Because Vidal, like the buff Roshi, is a buffed increase. Uh, the route here is not that important, at least I have not noticed. I've gone both left and right, and the Zeni amount doesn't seem to be that different between each side. It looks very randomized. Um, I do assume the right hand side gives you more, uh, simply because it's longer and you have more chance at getting some. And this fight is also, once again, incredibly easy. So there's no real need to stress about this build. Just go straight in for the highest world tournament team that you can make and push with that team to get as many Hercule statues as possible. The Hercule statues are the main source of any income that you're going to get. Uh, you can get anywhere between a bronze, silver or gold. And those are really, really going to help you out because the bronze, uh, silver and gold sell for 250, 500k and 1 million. And if you start doing that every day, you should get between 1 to 3.5 million zenny a day, which over a week adds up to 21 million, which is, of course, almost an easy air on a unit. Uh, so please don't avoid this event. It's 10 stamina and it's one minute of your time and it's going to make you able to summon and awaken so many more units. Um, the next stage I'm showing is the training in the clouds. I don't want to say that this event is necessary. Um, I've been trying it out with link leveling to see if it's any good. Um, and it doesn't seem to be necessarily that good. So to be honest with you, I wouldn't add this into my daily rotation. I've been test running it for a little bit. There is a chance to collect a Goku and a Piccolo from the stage, which is nice for some collectors. Um, but overall, the stage doesn't necessarily supply that much XP to your characters. Maybe if you really, really low on training items and you really want to buff some characters up, you can run the stage and supply them with some XP. But it's nothing more than you'd probably get running some of the newer events anyway but you're welcome to go for it you do get a choice in items afterwards so you can always pick up some decent awakening medals or maybe a support item or two but overall this stage i wouldn't suggest running i don't think the stamina is worth it uh, unless you are a collector or if you are trying to just see if it like me it manages to increase your link levels the next event we're going to look at is not a daily event, um, it actually is a weekly, it refreshes every 7 days, and it's the pan event. So with the pan event, the main cause of concern in terms of this event is nothing really, it just has a very high stamina cost. So it produces a massive amount of rank profile XP, the AT stamina event in stage 1 produces 120,000 rank profile XP and the 100 stamina event in part 2 produces around about 400k thousand rank up XP. It's good to do this event uh, once per week because it will help you gather up uh, rank XP which obviously pushes you closer to stones and higher team costs and more stamina. But it's also just nice to do because you can drop the LRB pan from the event which is really nice. She drops as an SSR and eventually you can awaken her if you attempt the event a certain amount of times with a GT category team you can finish the event and get a whole bunch of awakening medals which will allow you to take the pan and turn her into a free to play LR. That pan is very good, she has decent damage reduction and she has a nice active skill that really buffs the rotation and makes them produce a high amount of damage. 
she's been used on a lot of SBRs and ESBRs, so I definitely suggest collecting her over time. Another perk of this stage is while you're running it, if you see a question mark appear on the stage, that means you have a chance at a second fight. Uh, I would definitely do that fight because the B-Pan stage, being a high stamina, high XP stage, also has a very high chance at increasing link levels, especially those at the 8, 9, 10 range. So definitely do this event, pick up the question mark if you can, and you're going to want to focus on maybe taking a team that you want to link level. Unless you're going for the B-Pan, then you're going to want to take a GT category team so that you can pick up the medals to awaken the B-Pan that might drop. That's about it for the dailies. Um, I know this kind of video really only suits newer players or maybe players that just kind of don't know what to do when they start off their day. But no matter the event, no matter the campaign, I start off every day by doing these events. It's just really helpful. It keeps me topped up on supplies. And to be honest with you, it's just a nice relaxing way to get most of the dailies out the way. Um, I would like to just sign this off by saying that I'm going to be posting a ultimate challenge video soon and also a video regarding the new king event so yeah give me any ideas below and let me know what else you do daily cheers bye